I haven't forgotten one yet. I probably just jinxed myself. It's been, it's been that kind of morning already. So here we are in the session on playlists. So I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to make sure that I have my sound on. I already know from the last session that my sound finally works with the videos because, of course, I have a video to share with you. This one's actually excited about this. So beginning playlists is our session. Let me do uh, present. Beginning playlists. And again, form follows function. So it can look adorable, but it doesn't have to. You want to make sure that first off that it's functional, that it makes sense, that it's organized. And then stunning, then that's even better. And that goes for any of these things that you're creating or designing, not just playlists. But I just want to give you that reminder. Don't get caught up in the frosting, because if your cake doesn't taste good, then who cares if the frosting looks beautiful? All right. So I have a video that I'm gonna share. I learned a new um, skill last night, which you can see on the screen. It's not your normal little girl with the, with the mask on. So I learned how to make a Bitmoji that moves. And I know that a lot of you, when we had to connect your Bitmoji app that's on your phone to your Google account, which is most likely on your device, not necessarily on your phone, you had to also install Snapchat, which made some of your eyes go wide, like, what? I don't use Snapchat? Well, neither do I. And that's just the connector that connects Bitmoji to Google. Well, when I spent some time last night learning how to make these movable Bitmoji, I learned that you need to use Snapchat, go figure. So now if you have Snapchat in your phone, you'll be able to do it too if you wanna try it. Is it required? No. If you are like, I am so sick of the word Bitmoji, then you have a few minutes to just tune us out <laughs> and then you can tune it back in afterwards if you want to. I found a tutorial that taught me how to do it and I think that it is pretty easy to follow. So I'm going to hit play. Then, no, I'm not. Shoot, there we go. Play. Hey everyone, this is Angel Carrion. After I posted my virtual classroom on Facebook, I had a few questions about how I got my Bitmoji to be animated. So I'm going to show you briefly how you can do that. The first thing you want to do is set up a background to record your Bitmoji from Snapchat. What I did was just set up two blank sheets of white paper, but if you have a white wall, you can go ahead and use that as well. So what you want to do is open up your Snapchat application and you will notice this icon down here what you're going to do is set up your phone with your white background you're going to click on this icon right here and this will pop up after you do that you will notice that this icon pop pops up go ahead and select that and what you want to do is search bitmoji and you will notice that there are different options, these colored options, disco dance, down here, mic drop, dance machine. The one I used was called look at this. So I'm going to select look at this. And it's going to place my Bitmoji on my screen. Sorry about that. There it is. So it's loaded on my screen. You can move him around bring them closer, make them bigger. What you want to make sure is that all of it shows up on your screen. So you don't want your hand coming off the screen. So just make sure it all fits in there. And what you're going to do is just record a few seconds of your Bitmoji. So I'm going to record a few seconds and then release. I'm going to mute that. What you need to do next is you don't have to post this. All you have to do is download it. So you, down here, you're going to go ahead and click download and it's going to say save so what that means is that it's saved to your device's gallery once you're done with that what you need to do is transfer that file to your computer by whatever method you prefer whether it be airdrop or through google drive or onedrive once you get that to your computer 
what you're going to do is visit this website called unscreen.com. This is where you're going to remove the white background. So all you have to do is find that file on your computer. I have it right here, Snapchat. I'm just going to drag it onto this screen and it starts the upload process. Now this goes by pretty quickly. You have to wait for it to process your video. It starts removing the background. So it's kind of trial and error. Sometimes you'll get the right parts of the background removed. Sometimes you won't. In my case, it didn't remove everything just like I wanted it to, but I just left it like that anyways. So this is the result of the background removal. What you need to do next is come to this drop down and click GIF or GIF. You want to download this file. It'll create it for you. and it'll download it to your browser. If you're using Chrome, you'll see it down here. Otherwise, it'll be in your downloads folder. The next thing you need to do is go to your presentation, which I have right here. I already have a background set up on my slide. And all you have to do is drag that in there, drop it, and it's animated. So just place it wherever you'd like to have it placed. Now, some of you in your classrooms, you have other items that you want to make clickable. So what I suggest is that you crop your file and you want to crop as close as you can to your animation. So just choose a shape that matches your animation. I believe I chose this one earlier, trapezoid. So that way I have this part and this part free for other objects in my classroom. And that's it. That's all you need to do to get your animation into your Google Slides. I hope this helped. So that particular one last night, as I was watching it, I stopped and rewound and stopped and rewound until I could get myself through all those steps. Don't ever expect to watch a tutorial online and be able to just go do it. Or if you can, I think that's awesome but it's okay to rewatch it and see, oh geez, what did I miss or what do I need to do? So I was able to create my little um, runway bitmoji, which is still not perfect. My hand disappears once in a while and the background looks funky, but no one's gonna stare at it <laughs> as much as I do. So I just thought I'd pop that in there as an extra something for you to be able to check out. All right, so if you are working on your I keep wanting to say landing page, your playlist, it's all the same thing. It's just a word. It's a simpler version of a landing page or some people maybe have been doing hyperdocs for a couple of years. It's very similar to that. What I wanna be able to do is offer you support, answer questions. I'm gonna go through, this is the um, module that you're doing in Modern Teacher. And what I'll do is just kind of review how you go about getting all of your work up into Modern Teacher for your playlists and your learning plans. Before I get started, does anyone have any questions? We have no questions yet. All right, Karen, thank you very much. Okie doke. So here we are in Modern Teacher and it's a badging program. So you're gonna notice that you have all of these shields next to each course that's listed in Modern Teacher. You can go through and do the literacy, which means that you've learned to become literate in that particular topic, but they really want to know if you're able to then demonstrate that literacy through a fluency exercise or being able to demonstrate it through doing. So that's why they have their badges split in half. It's one thing to understand the concept, but to be able to then put that concept to use and show it that you're a fluent user of that concept are two different things, which is why your badges are all split in half. You can also, some of the, like I've been through some of the other courses, you can do just the 
literacy part and then go back and do the fluency. These are not required at all. But for me, I wanted to make sure that I really understood what it is that you guys are going to have to do for this upcoming year. So that's why I've gone on to take more of the courses. But the ones that everyone has been working on are the architect of an online classroom space, which is your landing page. And now we're talking about effective playlists and learning plans. So the learning is all the same. There, you still have to make your way through all of these modules, even though in some of them they're talking about playlists, playlist examples, beginning playlist templates, which is what our meeting is about right now. But then also it goes into what an inter international, <laughs> that's the stroke, an intermediate learning plan is and what an advanced learning plan is. And then there's the best practices for all of the digital environment and then your literacy check at the end. So you have to complete all of these no matter what you're going to create in the fluency section. So once you've made your way through all of these and you have little green check marks on all of them, then your literacy badge will light up as green. To get your fluency badge to light up, you have to choose what you're going to do. You choose your playlist or you choose your intermediate or advanced learning plan and then you create it. Once it's created, and I don't have a playlist or a learning plan, but let's say that I have created a Google site that shows my playlist or learning plan and let's pretend that this is it. So I would want to make sure that I have my link to whatever hard work I did, whether it's in a Google Doc, whether it's in a Google Slideshow, whether it's in a Google Site, whether it's somewhere else, um, you would want to make sure you have that link first. And then you're going into Modern Teacher. And you would start with the one that you completed. So in this case, for this course, you're here because we're talking about a beginning playlist. And so I'm going to go ahead and click this upload arrow. They give you some resources if you want to be able to check those out, which just kind of helps support your learning. But then when you're ready, you're going to click on add attachment. And I didn't really download it to my computer. It's not a file that I'm uploading. It's a link to the work that I did. I would want to make sure that my site or my slides or my doc, the permissions are set for anyone to be able to view with the link or to just mash P, whatever the permissions should be, make sure you have that set first. And then you're going to click to add your link. It asks you to title it. So I would say like Susie's beginning um, playlist. And then the URL was what I just copied. So I'm going to vomit that in there. And then if I wanted to put in a description or if there was something I struggled with or something that I I'm still trying to figure out, I would put that in the description, otherwise just leave it blank. And then down here for modern teacher, you can decide if you're gonna have it be for all districts or just your district so that other people can see the work. Although my guess is that most of us are so busy, we haven't even had time to go through and look at other people's work. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. And then select. So now you can see it's listed over here. And when I hit save, it will upload it to my modern teacher portfolio. I also want to make sure I come over here and I change this from not started to complete. You can change it to in progress if you're working on it. I wouldn't worry about it. I would just wait till you're done, click complete and save it. So that's awesome. You think you're done, right? No, you're not done, silly. So I'm gonna go, whoops, I'm gonna go back here to the modern teacher playlist. And you might have literacy done, but you still don't have your star lit up. And you clearly just put your link up. Well, that's because there's three different assignments here. You really only have to do one. So you have two choices. You can either go into the other one and change it to complete or you could add your link on all three, the same link to all three, whatever you feel like doing will give you that, um, that completion on that particular assignment. But make sure that all three, if I hit my back button, all three of these have to be green 
in order for this to be green and show that it's all done so that you've received both badges. You've learned about the topic, you are now literate in that topic, and you've demonstrated your understanding or your fluency with that knowledge. Questions so far? I'm actually gonna look at the chat too, Karen, only because at last class I got some private ones and, <laughs> and you can't see those. All right, good, nothing. Okay, so then your playlist when you're in, oops, I'm clicking on stuff without even trying. I'll click happy today, I'll keep going this way. Modern teacher, and it's not this one, it's this one. So if you've gone in and you've looked at the playlist examples, I know that it's a video that walks you through, but make sure that you get the chance to look at all of them. They're showing them for different grade levels, for different um, curricular areas, so that you can get an idea of what's gonna work in your space. It might be easy if you're an elementary teacher because you have like so many things you can put in or it might be harder if you're a specialist in a like a role like a counselor or if you're working um, in a different area so you might not be sure what to put in there um, some of our roles like for me I'm not really gonna have a playlist I guess I could have for these courses I could have created a playlist I don't know if I would consider maybe my matrix is somewhat of a playlist but it's not designed for you to make your way through independently until after we've created the content so I would need to wrap my head around how to make it a playlist for all of you because you're my students um, so it just it depends on the role that you're in so if you're a little stuck on that that's okay just reach out to either someone else that's doing the same job as you or to whoever your um, supervisor is or me if you're not sure whatever works for you but there are some examples make sure you check those out another one here and then you can also go in and let me see if i can remember how to do this on the fly uh, oh i think i know where it is maybe if i go into my fluency thing in here we go here yes um when i go into the fluency thing for beginning playlist. I've already put my link up. I've added my attachment and I've saved it. That's what I just went through. But if I keep scrolling down, this is where everybody else's examples are. So if you find someone who does a similar job than you, you're able to look at it. For the most part, you're going to see that we have um, Mashpee folks in here, but you might also see teachers from other districts, which might give you a different frame of reference. You can also put in comments and give them um, props on how they've done or ask them questions. If they did something amazing on their playlist and you wanna know how to do it, well then ask them. I think that that would be really cool. So this is where, when you made that choice on your ad attachment and you went to click a link here, whether or not all districts can see it, just Mashpee can see it or nobody can see it. That's where that shows up, is down here in this list underneath. So you can look at your school, which I'm surprised. That, oh no, because I'm, I'm listed as the high school. Your district, so anyone at that district level or anyone who has put it to share with the district and your cohort, if you've been assigned to a particular cohort, then that would end up showing up in here. So uh, that's just another way to be able to see what's in there and to get some ideas. I'm going to stop for a second to see if anyone has specific questions. This is your chance to, to share. I know that I've received a lot of instant message, instant messages, private messages, um, either here in the Zoom chat or on my email. Um, a lot of people are saying, geez, I have a question. I don't think anybody else is struggling when I can tell you you're not the only one. So it might be helpful to somebody else if A, they know that other people are struggling, but B, if what you're asking is helpful to others, which it probably is. It's so quiet, except for the cricket. You guys all can hear my cricket. <laughs> It 
to give whole new meaning to the word crickets. All right, I have to, I'm going to stop sharing my screens. Yeah. <laughs> stop share. All right, I'm back in here with all of you people. Are there any questions? I'm looking at my private stuff, nothing. How do you organize your playlist in Google Classroom? That's a good question, Anna. So I would be putting your playlist onto, whether it's a Google Doc or a Google Slide or a Google Site, whatever you prefer, and then I would be linking to it in your classroom as a resource. So in classroom, you'd be adding that resource as a link, and then the students can go to that playlist. That would probably be what I did. And then if there's any type of an assignment, then the assignment would also go in classroom so that you can you know, have that accountability piece, that ability to track who's done it, who hasn't done it, where they're at in their, in their work. Because a playlist is gonna give them some choice as to what they do as they make their way through the week. So having those assignments in the same spot in your Google Classroom makes a lot of sense. Does that help? Yeah, I, I was, I watched your um, Google Classroom video and um, mm -hmm. I, I was thinking for my, cause just because of my kids are a little bit different than everybody else's. Um, I was thinking about organizing it by uh, topic. I don't know, like having my links that way. Um, is that similar to like have it or not? I don't I would know. Definitely. Yeah, I would definitely use, um, and when you say topic, do you mean like science, math, well, th well so yes. And like, you yeah. know, like light, I do life skills and things like that. So I have yes. videos that I have created and I just wanted to or have it organized in that fashion so that they can mm -hmm. select that way. Yep. Um, because it's really their parents that would be helping them with it anyways. So, right. Okay. Exactly. So yeah, in your mm -hmm. Google classroom, you can definitely create different topics and then under each topic, you can put either resources sources for them to access like a playlist which tells them what to do yeah. or you can put in the actual assignments which is where they have to show their you know understanding or their example or their work or whatever it is that you're looking for them to okay. do All yeah. right. thank you you're welcome and don't be afraid to ask um people at the high school they've been using classroom for years and they are way better at it than i am so they might be like oh but you could do this so don't be afraid to ask around. All right, so it's 1127. These classes are going faster than I anticipated. I thought that there would be a lot of questions about um, playlists and landing pages and learning plans. But there isn't. <laughs> now you don't have to send me a link to your playlist. A lot of people have been sending me those too. If you have a specific question about one, then yeah, absolutely, you can send it to me. But other than that, the only place that you're putting it, places, one place you're putting it is up into Modern Teacher because it's your assignment and it puts it in there. And then the other places, wherever you're going to house it, whether it's in Classroom or um, whether it's linked to your landing page, whatever that is, all I need is your landing page. Susie, in a nutshell, what's the difference between beginning intermediate and advanced so in a nutshell the advanced plan has the standards the intermediate doesn't have the standards but it definitely has some um, differentiation so the advanced has standards differentiation and then all of the things that they do to learn about it and then to demonstrate their understanding and so then the rubric like the I can rubric without okay so Yep, and then an intermediate, you don't have to have the standards, but you still have the differentiation, you still have the learn about it, and you still have the like demonstration of learning. And then a playlist is just basically, here are the things that you can do on certain days, like Monday, here are your things to do, or your yep. choices. And so it's very simplified. There's no standard, there's no I can statements. Um, there's very little differentiation besides choice, uh, you could create different playlists for different groups of students and maybe that would differentiate. So that's why it just depends on um, what you're teaching, who you're teaching, what your content is, what your delivery is as to what it is that you're creating. And you only do one. You don't do all three. Don't do all three. Yeah, don't make I, a playlist and then a learning plan. Don't do yeah, that. I, I do that. Mm -hmm. So the playlist and, and then the learning plan that goes along with a particular plan. No? 
you can, if you're, a playlist is like a simplified learning plan. So if you're going to be creating a learning plan anyways, I wouldn't try and do the playlist as well. Only because it's extra work and your time and energy and patience are probably limited. So if you're going to do an, an intermediate or an advanced learning plan, then you don't need the playlist. You can go right to the learning plan, which just has more detail in it. That's all. That's the only difference. Um, but it's whatever, again, works for you with your kids and your situation and your area. It's so different for all of you, especially where I'm talking to the whole district. All right. I'm going to have to show you what I did and then you can guide me. Thank you. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Any other questions? And I think I said it in the last class, but I didn't say it in this class. I took it over the summer. I took this course over the summer and I was um, chatting with Meg and I've chatted with other people as well, just about the fact that this course is rigorous and it requires a lot of base skills when it comes to technology. So if it um, stretched or strained your skills, then I, I can believe that. It was, it was a challenge for me. It certainly wasn't a cakewalk. So I know that for many of my students, which are all of you, that it was a challenge. It was not easy to do. So if you struggled, then you are not the only one. I can promise you that. It was not an easy, you know, quick get her done type of thing. There was no easy button on this course. All right, are there any more questions? I don't want to keep recording if you guys are all, if you're good right now. And if you're not good, you can let me know that too. You don't have to let me know live online in front of everyone. Okay, so I'm gonna hit stop on my record. Thank 